here with Luis talking about jazz punk. Yes. Um, can you tell us a little about jazz punk? Uh, I mean, I can give you like my boilerplate spiel. So jazz punk is a comedy adventure mm -hmm. set in like a retro futuristic world. Mm -hmm. So it's a cyberpunk game, but kind of retro yeah. futuristic in that way. I, um, I know what you mean, like kind of like it's what people assuming based on today's technology how that will advance right not obviously like oh we all use ipads in the future while everyone thought yeah exactly. like hollow decks or, or radio like uh if you see those magazines everybody thinks everything is going to be everything is radio mm -hmm. it's like the radio backpack yeah. the radio glass of water like <laughs> everything in the world they wanted to have like a radio attached to yeah. it which is right now everything is swipe everything mm -hmm. you want like a swipe glass of water or something so it's that kind of world, and then we built a comedy into it. Yeah. And a lot of the comedy kind of styling is taken from a lot of spoof movies mm -hmm. that I grew up watching. Yeah. Uh, so it's me and um, my programmer, Jess Browse. Mm -hmm. We grew up watching like Airplane, Naked Gun. I was uh, getting a Leslie, like, like, yeah, this, like this game needs to be starring Leslie Nielsen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that, like. Uh, like all of those, you know, Hot Shots Part Du was like yes. a really huge one for me. So a lot of that kind of spoof comedy where it's just, you know, every minute there's like a new stupid joke. The, the jokes are rolling off of each other, but yeah. like, it's kind of like the rule of threes where like, I mean, just the bowling joke I was noticing mm -hmm. when they was playing, it was like, it did one and then did another, and then at right. the end there's a guy who's actually a bowling pin. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to kind of uh, snowball things together that yeah. way. There aren't really that many comedy games, and when there are comedy games, they try to just tell you like, one joke as though they're sort of a comedian or something like oh I'm gonna spend five minutes and try to give you a, yeah. a this is my brick wall I'm in the brick yeah wall. yeah exactly and so it doesn't really work for games or I don't yeah. fi feel that approach works for games as well so jazz punk's kind of our take on it where it's it's like snappier and I, I totally agree just because again like uh, unlike every other medium like you decide mm -hmm. how you approach it and like you can completely avoid a dialogue box where the joke is in the video game it's yeah by, but like in this one like the gameplay is inherently built into doing the joke because it's like you're doing it by interacting. Right, and if and if they miss it, there's another joke around the corner. Oh so yeah, sure. Like you have them going. Like yeah, exactly. So it's we don't have to worry too much about investing sort of a Half Life Two or something where it's like we spend all this time setting up this joke and then the character looks away and you're like, no, that was the punchline. Like the, it's been 20 years making that. The whole thing, and I, they turn away from it. Like, I know more world than the people will ever see. Mm -hmm. So for me, there's, like, reasons for why things are the way they are. And yeah. I understand the socioeconomics and all that crap <laughs> of, the, of this stupid world. Uh, but it's important because it uh, it's world building, right? Yeah. And so you need to know how do they file their taxes and, you know, <laughs> what's on TV or who's there, David Letterman or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, just watching the game playing and like you can wander around have dialogue options mm -hmm. and like talk to people and like just the fact that you decide to interact with this guy mm -hmm. now you're gonna have this little one-off with him and there's jokes in there also like, mm -hmm. it feels like a very clever game i think people pick up on it if mm -hmm. there's uh if there's an underlying context for things mm -hmm. even if i don't explicitly like you know release a history of you know yeah. a huge epilogue <laughs> or something people will pick up on on the details and the real, like some realization of the world. Even if it's a comedy, you still need some sense of the world. Otherwise, it's, everything is arbitrary, yeah. and then it's not really funny. Yeah. And so for us, it's like you need a kind of grounded world, even if it's colorful, yeah. so that you can... It, it like, like their sense to the madness type thing. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Like there's something there to break. Four, four years you've been working on this, right? On the side? Yeah, four years on and off. Yeah. Uh, We've worked on other games and stuff mm -hmm. during that time, but um, it's gone through three different engines. Mm -hmm. So it's on Unity now, but it was on some other awful engines before. So part of it was just porting and yeah. stuff like, ugh, yeah. Like, do you guys see like the end in oh, yeah. for this game now? Like, oh yeah. You kind of like know where it's gonna go. 2013 is where where we're at mentally. Okay. This is the, this is the year of the jazz punk. <laughs> like All right, but um, I'm excited to see more of the game, so oh, thank I'll you. Uh, let you get back to it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool.